last SSME test, it was um, real stressful. I remember going to sleep that night about nine o'clock, so I could, usually our test, we would get in about five in the morning, we'd test around two o'clock. That night I went to sleep about nine, woke up about one, couldn't go back to sleep. Got to work about three in the morning. Security guard Mike, who's been knowing me for years, asked me, Corey, what are you doing out here? And I said, I couldn't sleep. He says, I got that test today, huh? I said, yeah. So he says, well, go on in, have fun, good luck. Test went great. People that showed up that day, we was dressed all in white shirts. We looked just like the Apollo days. We had the little black skinny ties. We had black framed glasses. We had the um, pocket protectors on. So it was, it was exciting, but it was actually sad because everybody knew it was the last test out here. And, and you know, everybody was remembering the people at the head that had trained them through the years and had retired and some of them, you know, they were talking to and just, you know, we had people from Canoga, Pratt & Whitney, from headquarters, everywhere. It was just a, an awesome experience and I'm really actually blessed that I was able to actually um, have some history and, and, and test, you know, the space shuttle main engine out here. I started working here for SSME around November of 2001. And if I can remember my most fondest memories, I have to say every shuttle launch. Pretty much being in the control room, just watching the engines light up, and everybody's waiting for them to turn off. Uh, once they're turning off, we, the, the room pretty much go into cheers because we know that once we ignite, ignite the engines and turn them out, there's a good chance that we're going to have a successful mission. There was one launch that I actually went to KSC for, and uh, I was observing all the operations in what the stack. That's where the SSME team sets at for each shuttle launch at KSC. And I actually went out just minutes before, the, before we launched the shuttle, and I, that was my first live shuttle launch that I had ever seen. It was very impressive. Since then, I have seen one more, and I'm hoping to see plenty more in the future. ago, I met my wife here at Rocketdyne. Uh, shortly after we were married, we had the uh, uh, good fortune to go to Kennedy Space Center for a launch. And because she was an employee, uh, on some of our free time, she was also badged in and we could go tour around. A couple of days before the launch, we were out at the launch pad. Um, our platforms giving us access to the engines were still in place. And uh, we were standing out there, sea breeze coming in, um, our uh, heads actually up in one of the nozzles. And uh, of course I reached over and touched the back of her head and she thought I was being romantic and I had to spoil the mood by telling her I didn't want her hair to blow into the nozzle and you know, provide any kind of contamination. One particular memory that stands out for me working on the Space Shuttle program is doing the routine post-test inspections that I was learning in my first few years here as turbine machinery. There was uh, one particular pump we were doing our final inspections on. It was completed an acceptance test and was ready to be going to Florida. And during that routine inspection, I noticed something unusual that I had never seen before and uh, it looked like a metallic contamination behind the turbine. When I talked to the more experienced engineers about it and we realized what was going on, it actually started an investigation understanding why this was in here and we ended up having to send the pump back for disassembly. And uh, 
for me, it was a, a, a really a lesson that even a routine inspection will find something that's of significant importance to the program, and that was really the first time I felt like I had directly contributed to the success of the program, and it was a day that, that will stand out in my memory for a very long time. I was fortunate enough to hire in up in Mississippi and they were in dire need of a computer engineer. I came out there in 1977 in the summer, in the fall, and, and uh, came to work on a computer system because it had been down for three weeks and, and they couldn't test the shuttle tanks with the liquid level sensors. Marv Carpenter was the engineering manager at that time, said that I was, I got asked how long it would take to get the system up and running if I had an estimate and I told him I didn't have, didn't bring a lunch. So I expected I would get it in and it was up in about an hour and he said, you're probably one of the smartest engineers I've ever met. Very fortunate. The only thing I knew was it happened to be that particular computer, but about a week later, Marv called me and he says, would you be interested in going to work for Rockadyne? And I says, that'd be great. And he says, well, what would it take? And I said, I don't know. What does your smartest guy now get? So I happened to be looking at Plowden was a test conductor and I hired in as an MTS-4 that day and that's been a great life ever since. I guess a uh, funny story is when I, when I first started out on the team, I was pretty new and uh, a little bit green to uh, building the hardware. I was working with another senior uh, manufacturing engineer, and it seemed as though every time uh, he had taken a day off for vacation or was out sick is when all the major catastrophes happened. We had, uh, we had some hardware that was damaged a few times, a duck that flipped in a dolly, and I was the one here to respond for it and really didn't know what to do, so I was having to, to run around and... Uh, uh, collect uh, a group of people to come help me solve the problems, but uh, without fail it always seemed like uh, the bad things went wrong when he wasn't here and I was, so I wasn't sure if it was my fault or someone else's, but uh, it was pretty interesting. It was a good learning experience uh, on the program. Um, we've definitely had our trials and tribulations building the hardware, but uh, we've made it through it and I think we've uh, made some of the best hardware the program's uh, put out. So. I'm originally from the Boston area and I uh, had originally thought that I'd like to have a career somewhere in the New England area and I did get an opportunity to come out here and work for Rocketdyne at the time. And I really thought that was going to be a short part of my career is to come out to California, work um, on what Rocketdyne was working, you know, the shuttle and so forth and the space shuttle main engine for a year or so and then go back. And, like I said, that's over 30 years ago, and it has just been a tremendous experience um, and challenging experience that I enjoy very much. So to answer your question, it's somewhat has been serendipity how I got into this career, but it has been very enjoyable and very exciting. And, and like I said previously, it's, it's the people, it's the challenge of the work, it's the total team effort relative to not only PWR working on a task, but also with our customer, our NASA customer, working to make something very challenging, successful, and advancing our presence in space and our understanding of what space is about. I had the opportunity to see in person my first space shuttle launch. Uh, this was in 1994 in September, STS-64. And my daughter was only three, so she could not be in the, um, 
stands with me, she had to be on the causeway, which is where the general public can go to view the space shuttle launch. So my husband took the uh, short straw and was with her on the causeway, and my sister sat with me in the viewing stands. And back in those days, uh, the launch window was much greater. It was up to two and a half hours that we could have a launch window. And as, of course, as uh, timing would have it, we would wait the entire two hours wondering, are we actually going to be able to launch the, the shuttle? And the worry was weather. And the clouds were heavy, and the tension was great. At one point, uh, I was looking at the countdown clock, and there was a soldier standing next to it. And it had been a long time, and he'd been standing there the whole time. And for whatever reason, in the last moments, he knelt on one knee. And sure enough, within moments, and the engines ignited, off. the fire and the flames, you Shuttle can see it, it lights up the whole sky, and all the natural um, uh, flying fish, the alligators, all the birds, everything comes. It's, it's, it's amazing how you see everybody reacting, the people and all, and up it went, and I, I still remember it vividly. And of course, I had no idea what my husband and my daughter were experiencing. They were quite uh, a distance from ourselves, and we didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> so I had to wait until we re... Um, you know, convened together, and she was so excited, only three years old, telling me about what her experience had been as well with so many of the uh, visitors from all over the world, uh, but also locally, uh, hundreds w go on the causeway to see the launch, and that's my fond memory. One very uh, memorable experience, this was a number of years ago, and one of my co-workers and I uh, went to Mountain Home, Arkansas, trout fishing on the White River, which we used to go over there frequently. But uh, we were over this particular time, and it happened to be uh, during a time when we were having a launch. So we finished fishing, and uh, we went into town, and of course, Mountain Home, Arkansas, Unless you're there for trout fishing, it's not exactly a uh, tourist hot spot. <laughs> so uh, we went into this little restaurant sort of slash sports bar uh, called the Back 40. Um, of course, there's TVs on the, being a sports bar, there's TVs everywhere. And we said, hey, uh, the shuttle's about to launch. Uh, could we see it on the TV? And we got this dumbfound look. And we said, you know, the space shuttle. And we still got that same look like, you ain't, you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> and so uh, we looked at each other and said, well, obviously we're not in Huntsville anymore. And um, uh, I probably should have asked the guy uh, how the Razorbacks were doing that year, and we probably would have gotten a response. Um, obviously, we didn't have our priorities right. I started working shuttle systems in 1977, and uh, so you, you can <laughs> you can do the arithmetic. There's no math involved in that, but uh, we've had a good time. Uh, I was, like I say, the research, the fun stage. We broke a few things, learned a lot, uh, put in 80 hours a week for months at a time, and uh, when we would get a test off, it was it was a feeling of completion. You did something, and uh, I like to have that feeling when I when I leave here. I like to have that feeling every day that I've accomplished something. And with the team that we have now, uh, we can. You know, some people uh, 
worry about uh, what we're going to do after the end of the shuttle program. It, and we had a meeting last week with the uh, deputy program manager for Constellation, and there's just so many exciting things on the horizon for the people uh, in the liquid propulsion world. The J-2 programs out there, the R-68, all the new missions are coming up with PWR engines on them, and even engines that we haven't built yet. So just to be a part of this, uh, you're sad that shuttle's going away, but the, the new programs are going to come on quick. And, and really, I think there'll be very little transition or we'll, we won't even notice it. Growing up in the valley, uh, as a young boy, I was able to look up at the Santa Susana and, and see it light up at night. And my father became uh, an employee of Rocketdyne uh, 40 years ago, and so that was a big, big push for me to want to get in and be following my father's footsteps. So when I got hired into Rocketdyne, that was that was pr pretty amazing for me that I, that I'm following in my father's footsteps. And as far as the shuttle itself, I don't mean to be cliche, but when I finally went and watched the shuttle fly, it was just amazing, and I just didn't really understand the power and the uniqueness and how scary it is to watch that fly, and once I got to see that, I'll never forget it. I've always known working on the shuttle program that that was something great, and I've always been proud to tell people I meet, hey, I work on the shuttle program. Uh, not many people really get to say that. We're a handful of people out in this world that get to say that. and. I've always been proud, but watching the shuttle fly just solidified it.